This channel is all about the future of AI. And in this video, we're gonna talk specifically about what we think might be happening. The future, preparing for the future. Well, that's obviously a strategic necessity for every organization. And one of the ways that we think about it is in the words of Wayne Gretzky, the Canadian hockey player, one of the greatest players of all time. People asked Gretzky why he was so good. And one of the things he said was that he learned to skate not to where the puck was, but to where the puck was going. And you need to do the same thing in terms of preparing for the advent, for the development, for the growth, and for the expansion of AI. So in this video, we'll present a model of where we think AI might be headed over the next five to seven years so that you can skate to where it's going, not where it is now, because we know that it's not going to stay where it is now. It's going to continue to develop and develop very rapidly. Now, the format of this video is a little bit different than the previous ones in the series. This is not an interview. This is a training video that we developed for a project that we're working on. So as we discussed in the previous video, our firm, Innovation Labs, is partnering with Future Lab, our sister technology company, to deliver both AI training and an AI strategy consulting project for the government of Thailand. So we've been busy preparing materials that we'll be using in both segments. And what you're going to see shortly is a 16 minute video that I prepared to explain some background about the development of AI and its relationship with other emerging technologies. And then, as I said, to share our forecast of what we think will be happening with AI over the next five to seven years. With that in mind, let's check out the video. Hi, I'm Langdon Morris. I'm part of the Future Lab team, and I'm here to talk about the future of AI. But first, we're going to talk about the next economy because AI is really a driving force in shaping how the next economy is going to be. And so I want to set a little bit of a broader context by looking at the economic process that we're going through. And so we can ask to start with a very simple question. We might say, what's changing? Of course, the answer is everything is changing and it's being driven by digitalization. So over the last 30 years or so, all of these industries have been through major process of disruption because of digital technology. So every facet of the economy is now completely different than it was 30 years ago because of the internet, because of how we're interacting, because of how we're creating and sharing knowledge. And this digital process, of course, is only accelerating due to AI and a series of other technologies that are coming along at the same time. So digitalization of the economy is now driven by the creative process, by the knowledge that we're creating, by how we're sharing it and how we're using it. The economy of today and tomorrow is going to be completely different than it was even five years ago. At a macro level, what we observe is that we're shifting from an era of mass, meaning stuff. The industrial era was all about how we could make more stuff to an era of meaning because this knowledge economy or the AI economy or whatever we're going to end up calling it is all about information and knowledge. And what do we care about with respect to information and knowledge? We care about what it means. So of course we still have to eat. We still want to have great manufacturing, but there's a, a layer on top of all of it, which is the meaning layer. And that's what's driving the economy now. So if you look at where value is being created, it's being created at the meaning level as much as it's being created at the mass level. This process of digitalization is happening amid a broader process of change that's described by all eight of these characteristics. So we see that around the world today, there is tremendous change in the structure of geopolitics, in national politics, of course, we're coping now with climate change and we're moving forward with the energy transition as a consequence of climate change, moving away from fossil fuels. Technology is certainly a key driver of all this and it's leading to, all of this is leading to massive change in the economy. Oh, by the way, our demographic profile is changing. The birth rate is dropping and in many nations, 
the birth rate is below replacement level, which means that their populations are declining. And all of this is having massive impact on global culture. So recently I wrote a book about it. It's called Hello Future, The World in 2035. And I used the scenario planning technique to look at all eight of these variables, trying to understand what's going to happen, and then to think about what we can do to shape what's going to happen. Because ultimately, a lot of the future will depend on choices that we make. Now, I visualized these themes in the book by this graphic, which is attempting to show that, yes, everything is connected to everything else. So if you make a change in one of these factors, it's going to inevitably influence the others. And by the way, you see the word shock there repeatedly because all of these changes are creating shock, leading perhaps ultimately to the one at the top, future shock, a term coined by Alvin Toffler a long time ago to describe the psychological challenge that we have in coping with all of this change. Now, let's talk specifically about technology. So here's a list of technologies which are evolving rapidly, all of them coming into mainstream use in the current time, all of them having significant influence on how we work, how we live, on the structure of the economy, on the very nature of what it means to be alive in this era. All of these factors are converging at the same time and that's leading us to what we call a digital storm. And in fact, we can think of it as the perfect digital storm. It's this convergence of all of these forces at the same time. So we visualize it like a giant wave of a tsunami, which is about to break across us. And yes, it is bringing massive, massive change. And also creating lots of future shock, lots of struggle to understand what's happening, and to accept it and to cope with it. So that's all by way of context. And now let's talk about the future of AI. So AI is a tremendously powerful set of technologies that do some very, very powerful intellectual tasks for us. AI is exceptional at pattern recognition. So whereas humans can cope with systems that have 100 or maybe 500 variables, AI systems can cope with tens of thousands of variables so they can identify patterns in systems which are much more complex than humans can understand at that level of detail. That enables them to help us solve very complex problems and also to model very complex systems. So what we're seeing is that AI is being used in all of these ways and this is all leading us to original insights. So AI is changing how we're thinking and what we're thinking about. In the early days of AI and robotics, people were very concerned about the displacement that these technologies might have at the lower end of the economy, in the rote jobs, in construction jobs, in fast food jobs, in distribution jobs. And certainly those industries are all being affected by AI. But what we're seeing today is actually the major impacts are at the opposite end of the economic spectrum. All of these professions and the advanced professionals in all of these professions are now using AI to help them think about the most difficult problems that they're coping with in their industries. So from aerospace to medicine, public policy, education, professionals in all of these industries are using AI to help them understand patterns which they could not understand without AI, because again, AI can cope with so many variables. And what this means is that AI is actually changing how work is done. It's changing how we do science, it's changing how we do engineering, it's changing how we do law, it's, it's changing every profession that deals with complexity. And that of course is every profession. Because by definition, the very purpose of a profession, the very definition of a profession is that it's a group of people who have a specialized body of knowledge. And that body of knowledge takes time to learn it takes time to master, and there are levels of mastery, and AI is advancing our mastery at a very, very rapid rate. So what we're seeing is that rather than impacting at the bottom layers of the economy, right now AI is impacting at the top layers, at the most advanced professional layers in every discipline around the world.
And that means, of course, that AI is also changing how we think. It's changing how we think about the problems that we can solve, and it's helping us to find solutions that we never would have found without AI. And this, of course, explains why AI adoption has been so rapid and so stunning over the last few years, because once the large language models came out that we could interact with in natural language, it became possible for us to access this vast capability to manage complexity and help us to solve problems. So what does this all mean about the future of AI? Well, what we can anticipate very clearly is that AI tomorrow will be much different than AI today. So we need to understand this evolutionary process. And what we understand at Future Lab is that AI is developing in waves. It's not a linear progression, it's a series of waves, one after another. And of course, what we're seeing is that these waves are coming faster and faster. Today, AI is focused around large language models and technologies like chat GPT. But we're moving into a new era, an era of agents, where we create agents that are doing jobs for us. And the era beyond that, we think, is going to be the era where agents are connected to agents into networks, and they can solve even more complex problems and work across domains. So not only within a specific professional domain, but they can interact across domains. So what we see here is a slide from Jeremiah O. Yang. And what Jeremiah has put together for us is a map of the agent ecosystem as of today. And what's particularly useful about this is he's organized it into the eight different categories of agents. So what we're seeing is not just generalized tools like chat GPT, but much more specialized agents. And of course, this is now reflected in where capital investment is going. So, so significant investments are being made in each of these categories. And what we expect in 2025 and 2026 and beyond is even more specialization. The ecosystem is going to become much broader and much more comprehensive. As more agents are developed, more new companies have started to exploit these technologies to bring new ideas and solutions into the marketplace. At the top of the image, Jeremiah said this, and I wanted to call it to your attention because I think it's very appropriate. He says that AI agents will become the dominant entities using the internet and using apps and using enterprise software. So we're going to interface with all of these, with the internet, with our apps on our phones and enterprise software using AI agents. And of course, this is going to do what? It's going to disrupt established business models across all of these industries and across all of technology. So yes, we're entering an era when a new wave of disruption is coming. So the disruption caused by large language models and chat GPT, well, that's only the beginning. In a previous slide, I showed where we thought it was heading over the next couple of years. So within three or four years, we expect agents will be acting in the real world. So not only will they be acting in the virtual world, with each other to share information, but they'll actually be affecting change in the real world. So not only will they have sensors, but they will have effectors. Of course, a major type of those effectors is going to be robotics. So we can expect that within three or four years, robots will have achieved a very significant penetration of the economy, and they'll be working much more broadly in many more industries and sectors. Within perhaps four to five years, we might see AI systems actually doing original creative work. Today, AI is doing work to augment human thinking, but as these systems become more capable, they will become more independent and we think therefore more creative. And where that is ultimately leading is called artificial general intelligence, AGI, also sometimes referred to as the singularity because it's going to be so disruptive. And at the current rate of technology development, we might be able to expect that in as soon as five to seven years. Now, what all this means for strategists is that we have to look beyond whatever the current state of the technology in order to understand how these waves are going to unfold and what that will mean for our company, our organization, our nation, our community. And there in red at the bottom is a sort of a summary in very concise terms. 
we think that the impact is going to be changed on the order of magnitude of 50 to 100x. So again, the perfect digital storm as delivered through AI agents, AI creativity, and ultimately AGI. Now, in this slide, I've visualized it as a sort of a linear process from step to step, from left to right. But we actually can see it also as an exponential curve. As each new wave of technology arrives, we'll see a compounding of impact. And that's what that rapidly rising line is intended to represent. Uh, do you remember the hockey player Wayne Gretzky? He was one of the greatest hockey players of all time. And when asked what made him so good, one of the things that he said was that he skated to where the puck was going, not to where it was. In other words, he understood how the game was going to unfold, and he planned his moves accordingly. Well, as a strategist or as a leader or as a citizen, you need to think about doing the same thing. You need to understand how this technology is evolving and expect that it's going to be evolving rapidly and prepare yourself, your family, your organization, your community for what's coming. Now, here's a specific example. So in our practice at Future Lab, we talk about design thinking, which is what's described over my head there. Design thinking is a process of creative problem solving, which leads to tremendous breakthroughs. And we describe it in three phases, immerse, invent, and implement. And as you can see, we see it as a cycle. And on the left, we've identified areas where AI is already impacting on the practice of design thinking. So it's helping us to understand, it's helping us to map, it's helping us to define, it's helping us to ideate, and it's helping us to prototype. We still think that humans have to do the user testing, but AI can augment all of the other five elements of the design thinking process. Because, again, it can help us to see patterns and to identify trends much more effectively than human thinking alone. So in design thinking, we're essentially partnering with AI tools. And that little robot icon on the bottom of the screen, that's our icon for Brainstorm Bot, which is a little AI tool that we developed at Future Lab, both to help us understand how the technology was evolving, but also to provide some brainstorming support, particularly for the ideation stage of design thinking. So where are we headed? Well, tomorrow AI is going to have impact of maybe 100x, which means we've all got to get ready. We've got to get ready for major change. And of course, the time to start is right now. So I ended that with a brief summary of design thinking and also implored people to get busy and get prepared. Well, we're also practicing design thinking in our work in Thailand. So we're starting off the project by interviewing a wide selection of people from throughout Thai society. And what we learn from them will be our immersion stage of design thinking. And we'll use that to inform both the design of the training, as well as, of course, the content of the strategy. We're going to be using an iterative framework for the project as well. So we'll cycle through the entire process of design thinking multiple times over the course of months as we're working on the project. And we're going to be doing some scenario planning work as well to help Thai leaders understand the possibilities, what might happen with AI, because we know that even as we need to make predictions and anticipate where we think the AI puck is going, we have to be prepared in case it doesn't go quite the way we expect it to. As our work in Thailand and in other nations progresses, we will definitely keep you informed. We have a lot of other materials to share that we have lined up for you, and we'll be sharing those in the coming weeks. In the meantime, Happy New Year, and we'll see you soon.